Cheers house. Get away from my dog! Its eyes were closed. It looked as if it was running on its side the way dogs run when they are chasing a cat in a dream. But the dog was not running out of sleep. The dog was dead. Get away from my dog! There was a garden fox looking at the dog. The dog is called Wellington who belongs to Mrs. Shears who was our friend. She lived on the opposite side of the road, two houses to the left. Get away from my dog! My name is Chrissy Jane Francis Boone. I know all the countries of the world and the capital cities, and every prime number to 7,507. Get away from the dog, for Christ's sake! I do not tell lies. Mother used to say this was because I'm a good person. But it's not because I'm a good person. It's because I can't tell lies. Your dog is dead! I've got that far. I think someone killed the dog! And what precisely are you doing in my garden? I'm talking to you. Why were you holding the dog? I like dogs. Did you kill my dog? I did not kill your dog! Is this your dog? not my dog! I'm going to ask you! Well You don't have to go trespassing in other people's gardens. 
You'd stop this ridiculous bloody detective game right now. <coughs> to make you promise me, Chrissy. And you know what it means when I make you promise? I know. So promise me that you'll stop this ridiculous game right now. I promise.
I said that I wanted to try and explain to you why I went away, and I had the time to do it properly. Now I have lots of time. So I'm sitting here on the sofa with the radio on. I'm going to try and explain. Christina, I'm not like your father. Your father, he's a much more patient person. He just gets on with things, and if things bother him, he doesn't let it show. Well, that's not the way that I am. There's nothing I can do to change it. Do you remember when we went shopping together in town and had to buy a present for your grandma? And you were fighting because of all the people in the shop. It was the middle of Christmas shopping when everyone was in town. And you got down on the floor and you screamed and you banged and put your hands over your ears. And you annoyed everyone, so I got so cross. I tried to pick you up and move you, but you wouldn't listen. You screamed and you knocked these bricks off the shelf and there was a huge crash. Everyone turned to see what was going on. With bits of broken bolt and string all over the floor. I saw that you wet yourself. And I was so cross. I tried to pick you up, but you screamed. So I had to wait until you stopped to walk you all the way home. Because I knew you wouldn't get on the bus again. I often thought that I couldn't take it anymore. And your father, he's really patient, but I'm not. I get angry even though I don't mean to. And by the end, we stopped speaking to each other because it ended up in an argument. I felt really lonely. And that's when I started spending lots of time with Roger. I knew you might understand any of this, but I wanted to try and explain so that you knew. We had a lot in common, and we realised that we were in love with one I said that I couldn't leave you. And he was sad about that. He understood that you were really important to me. He started to shout, and I got cross. I threw the food across the room, which I know I shouldn't have done. You grabbed the chopping board and you threw it. They hit my foot and broke my toes. And afterwards at home, your father and I had a huge argument. I couldn't walk properly for a month. Do you remember? And your father had to look after you. I remember looking at the two of you, seeing you together, thinking how you were really different with him. Much calmer. And it made me so sad because it was like you didn't need me at all. And I think then I realised you and your father were probably better off if I wasn't going to be with him. Why'd you ask me to come with him? And it broke my heart. I eventually decided it'd be better for all of us if I went. And so and I, I said yes. yes. And I meant to say goodbye. When I rang your father, he said I couldn't. He was really angry. He said I couldn't. He said I couldn't talk to you. I didn't know what to do. He said I was being selfish. And I was never to set foot inside the house again. <coughs> and so I haven't. I wonder if you can understand any of this. I know it'll be difficult for you. Christy, what I did. I did it for the best for all of us. I hope it is. Chrissy, I never meant to hurt you. Loads and loads of love, Mother. Mm -hmm. London. She lived at 451C Chapman Road, London, NW25NG. 
I knew that the train station was somewhere near, and if something is nearby, you can find it by moving in a spiral and walking clockwise and taking every right turn until you come back to the road you've already walked on. And that's how I found the station. Of course, I think that's the car park. Please, 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 Seven minutes past 
two in the morning. I can't sleep. Chrissy! Siebon, don't go. Uh, Chrissy! Siebon, don't go. Siebon, don't, don't. Chrissy, where are you? Chrissy! What are you doing out here? I've been walking sick. I've been looking for you everywhere. If you ever do that for me again, I swear to God, Chrissy. I love you, but I don't know what I'll do. You have to promise me I'm not going to do this again. Do you promise me? I promise. You can't trust people in London. What time is it? It's four o'clock. Chrissy, please get into the car. Into the car? Where are we going? We're going home. You mean home in Swindon? Yes, love. Is father going to be there? Chrissy, please. I don't, don't want to be with father! It's going to be okay, Chrissy, I promise. Are we going back to Swindon so I can do my maths A level? We're going back because if we stay here any longer, someone's going to get hurt. Does that mean I can do my maths A level? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 